Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So I have a little bit of an update. So as you guys know, I sold my house and the plan is to move a little further north. It's only about three hours from where I am now, but to me it's God's country and that's what I wanted. Anyways, I was getting kind of bummed out because there just didn't seem to be anything available to rent. I wanted to rent for the winter time because you just can't see property that well when, you know, you got snow covering the ground and everything in my opinion looks absolutely gorgeous in the winter time. Anyways, so I was getting really bummed out. There wasn't anything available. Any properties available to rent are for like vacation properties. They want like $1,000 for three or four days. Well, I don't want to pay $1,000 for three or four days. I want to pay $1,000 for a month or, you know, roughly around that price. So anyways, what I was doing is sending uh, messages to these places that are renting out because usually they don't rent for the winter. They close down their cottage at the end of the month or October, as I mentioned. So as a shot in the dark, I found this cottage. I thought, oh my gosh, it's just gorgeous. Not going to work out. I can tell you that right now, just like none of the other ones will. But they responded back to me. They were looking for somebody to rent the cottage for the winter. Like just one person. They don't want to have to deal with it. Um, Same as I'm looking for a cottage to rent for the winter absolutely perfect, but this place is gorgeous. So anyways, I'm going up to see it uh, at the end of the month. So please, 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 prayers and fingers crossed. Oh my gosh, can you guys imagine? Okay, so enough of the jibber jabber. I'm going to do some uh, Bigfoot in Kentucky because I know how much you guys love Barton Nunnally, just like I do, and I love all of his books. Okay, guys, The first story is from Crittenden County. In August of 1998, a seven-foot-tall, hairy, bipedal, red-eyed Bigfoot was reportedly seen on several different occasions by residents of Blackburn Church Road in Shady Grove, Kentucky, Crittenden County. The first time my father and I were going up on a ridge to listen for some turkeys, said one witness, who wishes to remain anonymous, when all of a sudden, out of the pine thicket, about 900 yards away, we heard something let out an awful noise. At first, we were shocked, then scared because we'd never heard this sort of noise before. It made that noise two separate times, and we left, headed home, and didn't think anything of it. About three months after that took place, my friend and I thought we would drive through the road just to look around. It was about 11 p.m. and sort of foggy. We were just driving along when my cousin noticed two red eyes on the bank. I thought it was a raccoon until the thing blinked and walked across the road in front of us about a 100 yards up the road. The creature walked upright on two legs and stood about 6'10". We locked the doors and drove off as the creature disappeared into the heavily timbered thicket. A year later, which was on August 10th, 98, my sister and two of my friends got into his truck and decided to go look for some deer. We ended up going down the same road where we had seen the creature the previous year. The girls were riding in the back just talking to each other, when my youngest sister screamed out. I turned around just in time to see the figure of something standing about 30 yards behind the truck. I grabbed the spotlight and swung it around only to find that the thing had disappeared into the woods. All in all, the witness claimed three different encounters with the beast, two of which resulted in actual sightings. The strange sounds were heard about 6.30 in the morning on the fourth day of 1997, turkey season. 
The second sighting took place around October of the same year, about 11 p.m. And the third sighting happened about 11.10 p.m. on August the 9th, 1998, near a small bridge. The creatures are still being seen in this area. On June 28, 2009, Mr. Timothy Cox, age 42, saw one walking through a pine thicket just two miles from Blackburn Church Road. I was blackberry picking in Old West Vaco area just off McConnell Road, Cox said. I was picking the berries near a set of three-year-old pines that stood about 10 feet tall at the time. Some deer came running out of the pines about 50 to 70 yards from me to the side. They were running pretty fast. I thought that was strange, that they didn't even notice me. But they were scared to death of something. I heard something else coming through the trees just a few feet in front of the trees where the deer came through. I could see a dark brown colored thing that was moving the branches apart as it walked between the rows of pines. This thing was moving at a fairly brisk pace and the branches were popping as it went along. I said, what the hell is that? It was tall, nearly eight feet tall or more because it was moving branches three quarters of the way up the trees. I could see an arm and part of a body. It continued down the row of the trees. As it got further away, I decided to get the heck out of there and run back to my truck a quarter of a mile away. It scared the heck out of me. I interviewed Mr. Cox on April the 6th, 2010. He was straightforward, no-nonsense type of fellow. His sighting took place, he told me, near the Caldwell County line. The creature was walking fast through the trees, grunting as if it was annoyed, but unaware of the witness's presence until after he ran from the scene. The wind was blowing towards Cox, but he noticed no unusual smell in association with the encounter. Seeing the huge beast scared him thoroughly. He admitted he made no pretense of bravery during the episode. He did what most would. He ran away. He was, after all, completely unarmed, save for a small hunting knife. He described the creature as upright, about eight foot tall, with long arms which it used to push the branches and limbs away. It had a stocky build and was entirely covered with long brown hair, he recalled. It scared the hell out of me, he repeated. He estimated that the humanoid weighed as much as five to six hundred pounds. According to him, both he and his son were surprised while turkey hunting in the area the previous spring when another herd of deer came running frantically out of the forest. One of them was a small doe, he told me, and it was so scared that it actually ran into a tree, nearly knocking itself unconscious. Then a terrible wailing roar erupted from the woods, followed by sounds of something very large Walking quickly through the woods, like the deer, the turkey hunters fled the area. The incident scared his son so badly that he wasn't interested in turkey hunting at all now. Cox admitted that the sound scared them both. He never heard anything like that before. Later, as he was researching the subject, he came across the alleged Bigfoot recordings from Ohio stated that they were a dead ringer for the sounds that they had heard. On both occasions, he had heard the sound of trees and limbs cracking and snapping loudly, suggesting that the creature was making no attempt whatsoever at being stealthy. Increasingly, Mr. Cox was first exposed to the phenomenon during a family outing in 1973, when he was just six years old. His grandparents, an uncle, and himself were walking along a trail on Pineville Mountain over Bell County when his grandfather spotted a figure a couple hundred yards up the mountain and pointed it out to everyone. It was a humanoid, covered in dark hair, and was standing behind a small tree, staring right at them. At first, the uncle thought it was a bear, but there was no muzzle and it stood upright with one arm around the tree, 
just like a man would. Alarmed, the group then beat a hasty retreat down the mountain. Despite having been in the entity's presence on three separate occasions and reacting in fear each time, just like the animals, Cox feels that the Bigfoot creature are more likely a form of some unknown hairy human. Okay, so that was the end of Crittenden County. And we'll start another one. This is just a small one. Cumberland County. Back in the 1970s, a man named James Vincent of Hendersonville was out hunting for a large man-like creature covered with white hair, which left behind 15-inch footprints and a terrible smell in Black Hollow near Bethpage, Kentucky. The area had a long history of Bigfoot sightings, and the creatures are known locally as wild woolly bullies. The hunt was, apparently, highly unsuccessful. The first American oil well was struck in Cumberland County, Kentucky, just three miles north of Burksville in 1829. It was also the first location in America to elect a female sheriff, And that is the end of Cumberland County. I think I'm going to do another one. Okay, guys, this one is Davies County, spelt with two S's for some odd reason. Um, Okay, Davies County, Kentucky, in the western part of the state, has a long history of monster activity as well. According to Owensboro Messenger Inquirer in 1978, Residents of the 2800 block of Fairview Drive reported that they had witnessed a huge dark-colored monster on several occasions, apparently observing them from concealment of the nearby woods. It was 8 to 10 feet tall, they claimed, and 4 to 5 feet wide in the shoulders. A truly massive creature. It usually appeared in the evening hours and was said to smell like rotting corpses of death. Tracks were found which measured 14 to 16 inches long and 6 to 7 inches wide. Evidently, the authorities were unable to offer any further help, so the neighborhood posse was formed to rid the area of the gigantic malodorous menace. The posse consisted of a man named Larry Nelson, his brother, and two friends. They were well armed, of course. The hunt for the beast was successful, and they came upon it by the banks of the old pond where they reportedly fired at it repeatedly with forty five caliber rifles at close range. Miraculously unscathed, the thing ran away into the woods, leaving no blood trail at all only an odd wet spot where the beast had stood. Several Owensboro motorists allegedly caught the creature in their headlights back in the 1980s. More recently, 17-year-old Josh claimed that he saw Bigfoot in Davies County on the 2nd of July in 2006, just outside of Owensboro. It was about 3.30 in the afternoon when... I was on the northwest end of Bon Harbor Hills when a lot of coal mines used to be and some entrances to these are still open in places deep in the woods. Me and my dad were checking out a dam that my uncle was enlarging next to a small pond. My dad had walked back down to the vegetable garden my uncle and his son were growing, so he didn't experience it. I could feel a presence looming over me from the ridge about a hundred feet away. I stepped into the woods and immediately knew I was out of bounds, literally. I was right next to a TP structure that I had read about at being possible Bigfoot boundary markers. I began studying it when, wham, out of nowhere, this five to seven pound rock grazes my ear and knocked the TP over. I was frozen where I stood, I looked in the direction from where the rock came from. I didn't see at first, but then I saw a 79-foot-tall shadow jump from behind a big oak tree at the top of the ridge. It took off going down the other side of the ridge 
and I took off in the other direction back to my vehicle. A few months prior to the encounter, the witness was in the same general vicinity when he heard a loud blood-chilling scream emanating from a thick-wooded ravine. The scream was followed by a horde of forest animals fleeing the area fast. A local Bigfoot investigator interviewed the 17-year-old witness and found him to be credible. He added that the witness claimed to have conducted a search for trace evidence and found some large impressions, which he felt were possible footprints of the creature. Interestingly, in the late fall of 2009, I spoke with one woman who claimed that she and her boyfriend had been in the backwoods of the Bon Harbor area in the winter of 2004 and come across something very unusual. Her boyfriend was a county surveyor and his job had put him in spots that were well off the beaten path. On this day, there was snow on the ground and it was very cold. When they arrived, they found a huge human-looking footprint and pressed deeply into the snow. It looked like a bare human footprint, she said, only it was about two feet long and about eight inches wide. She also remarked that she could clearly see the impressions of huge toenails that dug into the snow. She didn't know what to think, but the print scared the heck out of her boyfriend. She said, who insisted that they leave the area immediately? Just a few miles down the road from where I grew up in Henderson, Kentucky, near the Davies County line, comes this story told to me in 2015 by a woman whom I'll call Molly, as she wishes to remain anonymous about an experience she had as a child in the mid-1970s at a place called Hurricane Slough. My dad was an engineer and land surveyor in Davies County, Molly said. He knows a lot about the backwoods in the area, from Stanley through West Louisville, and spent time on this property as a child. But he is not the type to believe this story. He sees these things very black and white. One side of my family has lived in this area since at least the 1870s, and I was about four years old with my dad. It was probably 1976 or 77. I was the oldest child, and he always took me for rides in the red pickup truck. We were out in the country to look at projects. My great-grandma was still alive, and she had several pieces of property in the Stanley Sorgo area. My dad was the oldest grandchild and managed the property upkeep. This particular piece of land had been in the family for four generations. It doesn't have a house or a building on it, but rather used for crops. My grandfather and great-grandfather farmed it, but now we paid a neighboring farmer to plant and harvest for us. On this day, we were not near the frontage road. We were deeper back on the property, not too far from Green River. In the front of the property, there is actually a jack pump, a pump well for crude oil. From the main road, you turn on the dirt road, which cuts through the middle of the property and ends at Green River. We drove back through some fields to a drainage ditch about three quarters of the way to the river. There were mostly trees around the ditch back then in the mid-70s. It's been cut way back since to keep clear for flooding. Past the ditch, there's another small strip of farmland fields. It floods often and then a thin tree line on Green River. I was playing on a picnic blanket on the far side of the ditch while my dad looked to see if the beavers had dammed up the ditch. He was clearing away some brush and looking at the water flow. He's a civil engineer, and probably about five years later, he put in a big drainage pipe with a dirt bridge across it on this property. He was probably at least 250 yards from me on the other side of the ditch and down into it. I was playing near our pickup truck, and I was a very precocious blonde-haired kid and singing to my stuffed animals and playing tea party. There are a ton of wild vines on the trees in this area, overgrown on the tree trunks in the thicket. 
It's almost like kudzu, but not very leafy. I guess it might be honeysuckle, poison ivy or something. I like those little tunnels and caves in the vines and had been playing in those previously. Suddenly I felt like something was watching me. Not from where my dad was, but in another direction. In the little stand of trees, maybe 50 feet away. I felt like I could hear it, but it made no sound. I just felt its presence very strongly. I looked and could only see its legs, which were huge and very hairy, dark brown. I thought they were part of tree trunks at first. I guess I could sort of see a vague outline of its torso to perceive its full size, but I never saw its face or head. Mostly I just saw its legs very clearly. I got up, still looking at it, backing away a couple of steps and ran towards my dad. I was startled but not extremely frightened. I didn't really feel like it was going to get me or chase me. I felt like it was observing me. But I ran because it was startling and I felt obligated to tell my dad there was something there with us. And it was big. And dad needs to know about these things. When I look back, after I ran about ten strides, it had totally disappeared. If it had run towards the river, it would have still been visible in the clear fields. If it had gone towards the ditch, it would have passed me. I remember thinking it might have gone into the tree trunk and vines somehow. I ran to my dad and told him that I saw a gorilla man. He could not understand what I meant. He went over and looked in the area but didn't see anything at all. When we got home, he told me to tell my mom about it. I kept saying it was big like a gorilla and standing up like a man, taller than Dad, who was 6'2", even though Molly had since grown up and moved away to the big city. Her family eventually sold the property, and she told me that she would always remember that day when she was a child and how it felt to actually see something so startling, so wild and completely unknown. It has always puzzled her to no end how such a large animal could completely disappear from view so quickly to such an extent that she had come to the realization that the creature she saw must have been supernatural in nature in order to pull off this vanishing act. This amazing ability, even though scoffed at by most self-professed experts, as we will see, seems to be a much more commonly reoccurring element of the Bigfoot mystery than one might realize at first glance, an element which some people steadfastly refuse to entertain. On almost every occasion, witnesses to this baffling cloaking or disappearing completely, ability never say anything about it to anyone for fear of ridicule. Even if they go so far as to report their experiences to a Bigfoot website or investigator, which too few witnesses bother to do, they purposely omit any atypical elements, reasoning that, because of them, the legitimacy of their sighting or encounter would be jeopardized, and their testimony either rejected or ignored. I've spoken to numerous such witnesses who admit to me that they posted their sightings to several Bigfoot websites but intentionally left out certain details of their experiences that they thought were too incredible to believe. For reasons such as this, the entire body of public Bigfoot sightings reports should be considered incomplete at best and the truth misrepresented. And that's the end of that. Um, I can honestly, before I forget, totally, totally agree. I can't tell you how many times I've spoken to people about their experiences, and this is the actual outcome. People don't want to discuss the woo. People don't want to believe that it could actually, you know, be something that exists. Um, it It takes away a lot of the the belief in Bigfoot. Like it's it's hard enough to believe that an eight foot tall creature exists 
let alone could possibly come from another dimension and can disappear in mid-step. Um, yeah, it's a difficult uh, phenomena to believe in for sure. What I'm really curious about is how many of you have actually cringed and or even fibbed a little when people ask you about your interests and fascination with Bigfoot? Just out of curiosity. Okay, guys, you know I love you. Don't forget, be kind to each other, take care of each other, and love each other. And don't forget to look after yourself. Don't forget to hit the like button, share this video, and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Okay, bye for now.